up, bro? What's going on? You listen to that old country, bro? What was that? You can hear that? Yeah, I can hear it. Damn, bro. I thought it was muted. <laughs> <laughs> you like Morgan Wallen? He's the man. I don't know who that is. I feel like I got to check it out, though. Yeah, bro. He's got some soul. I like it. What were you up to? Uh, walking my dog and res- responded to some work emails. Gotcha. Still got the work polo on. Bruh, I ain't even took off my workflow. I came home, made dinner, and took a fucking nap. There you go. Some days you just need it, you know? Yeah, big time. Big time. Do you feel like shit after you get up from a nap, though? Because sometimes it, like, ruins <laughs> the whole, like, the whole thing, you know? Hey, hey hold on. <laughs> Tell me if you ever did this, where you came home and you took a nap. And that nap was too fucking good, and you wake up in a fucking panic, like, oh shit, I done overslept for work. Yeah, oh yeah, bro. <laughs> and it's still that night, and you think it's the next morning. Yeah, <laughs> that's a scary feeling, bro. <laughs> <laughs> and it's the worst during the fucking like, ah! because it's dark so fucking early, and you literally, like, yeah, oh, shit, dude. Man. Bro. man, I done did that a couple of times, and that shit is the worst. That is, man. I fucking hate that. That's cr- But it's actually the relief afterwards feels really good, too. You're like, oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> <my God." laughs> but that spike, uh, of, that spike ooh, of shock, like, yeah, fuck, bro. like it, ooh, it jumps. That's the, the worst, like, me. yeah, when you, like, wake up intensely. Like, you ever, like, dream that you fall and you, like, shoot up? Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. That's the worst when you get, like, waking up by a shock. <laughs> oh, my God. That yeah. yeah, but that 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 sleep is, is some good ass sleep. But then mm-hmm. waking up from that, mm-hmm. bro. I used to like when I was a teenager then, but like would always nap before like a champ shift and just so groggy. Like when you'd come in, if you'd like have like a close shift and you nap before. Some people say though that they feel really like recharged after naps. For me, it's like no. If I don't get like if I start sleeping, it's like my body's like all right. This is like an eight hour thing. This is it. We're about to go in. Yeah. You know, like I'm so I'm that person where I don't. Like I take a nap when I come home before I go to back out and go to the gym. Oh, all right. And you feel better because, like, that. I do because, like, if I go straight from the office to the, it's my workout gonna be shit. Really? Because I just have, I'd be literally, I'd be exhausted. Out I might that. try that, man. That's in, that's an interesting thought because sometimes I feel sluggish, and it's because, and I'll tell myself, like, yeah, you just were working for nine hours. Like, yeah, you're fried right now. Yeah, so that's like my. I feel like if I even if I just get like an hour and a half just to recharge and let my body just rest for a little bit um and even just let your brain rest like people what i find to be funny is like you know how like people that you know work with their hands or like are active during their job you know they always talk about like how you just got a desk job and you don't know what real work is you know it's like but like it's a different thing bro. you don't know how mentally sometimes your job is just mentally draining and it wears you out it does, man. And people like underestimate that, but yeah, I, I need to recharge before I go. Otherwise, my workout is going to be trash. I'm gonna give that a try. Honestly, I hope it doesn't like just make me sleep the rest of the night. But like, I'm gonna try that. <laughs> I mean, I definitely have to make sure that like I put on a I put an alarm on. Normally, I don't sleep over the or sleep past the alarm. Are you good um, about that in the morning too? I'm so bad about snoozing yeah. my alarm. No, nah, I don't. I I've, I've never snoozed an alarm. That's amazing. Mad respect to you, sir. Like, I put my phone outside my room over here. So I have to get up and walk, and I'll take my phone into my room, snooze it, and go back to sleep. Like, it's <laughs> so bad, bro. Oh, my God. I got to figure something out because waking up is the hardest part of my day. Like, it's just terrible. Yeah. I don't. Yeah, I don't snooze my alarm. I just. Do you have energy right when you wake up, too, or do you, is it just Fuck discipline? No. Do you feel like shit? Okay. So you're just disciplined then. Okay. I just, for- like, my alarm goes off. Okay. Some people act like they're like, let's go. Like they're so excited, bro. Like I that I wish I was that person. The only time I'm like, yeah, the only time I can say I'm maybe like that is like if I'm about to go like on a flight somewhere. Yeah. Like okay, I may be like that, but otherwise, nah. Right. Right. Yeah, man. What you been up to? Bro, not a whole lot, man. It was a good weekend for the Saints. Did you see that? They like came back in the last quarter. Yeah, yeah. This yeah. weekend, so basically working to answer your question, but like the last free time I've had was over the weekend. So like, yeah, watching football was cool, like all day. Yeah, oh, that yeah. Was, it's good yeah, to be yeah. back, man. Mm-hmm. What is. about you? Uh, same man. So went to uh, went to the game 
uh, Michigan game on uh, Saturday, which was cool because that was my very first like night game. Oh, yeah, um, the night game at the stadium, and it got delayed uh, because of the rain and everything. Um, but it was a dog ass game. Oh yeah, that's you sweet, could bro. Clearly tell because you know how how I was trying to decide like who was going to be the starting QB based off of these first two games. So he started Cade the first game and then started JJ the second game. And it was very evident how much improved the offense looked with JJ out there compared to Cade. So is he going to start? Yeah. How about said that JJ is going to start? Cool. So, which he just needs to just, he adds a, a level of explosiveness that Cade just doesn't have. Interesting. I love listening to people because I don't watch a lot of college football. Like I'll always watch like the big ones, like Michigan versus Ohio State, you know, State versus Ohio or Michigan, and then like the bowl games. But like, yeah, it's always interesting hearing how people analyze what's going on with their home teams, man. Because I haven't heard anyone talk about State yet, so I don't know. Do they look good? No. I mean, they got they have some weapons, but it's just like it's just gonna come down to the quarterback. Where are they both ranked right now? Michigan's ranked four. State's mm. were ranked by. 15, 12 Damn. or 15, something like that. Michigan's ranked four. They're back, mm-hmm. huh? Is that hype, well, or you think they can live up to that? I think it's just really going to depend on um, the uh, – once they start playing some tougher competition, just what the offense is going to look like. I think the defense looks really, really solid. Um, they're fa- that's, I mean, that's a fast team, like especially on the defensive end. Like, it's a super fast team. So – yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, Michigan State's ranked 11. My bad. Hmm. All right. Yeah. Well, a couple games I watch a year, I'll be excited for. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, man. But but NFL's back. That's been fucking cool. Did you man, watch any of the games? I did watch some out? of the games. I mean, I think the thing that stuck out for me was we may have underestimated Kansas City. Oh, I was, and that's crazy to say. No, that's yeah. crazy to say, but I think we may have underestimated them because Jesus, uh, that was insane, bro. That was wild. Uh, like, I just said that to someone earlier today, so I'm glad you said that. Yeah, I mean, I was worried. I thought they'd take a step back for sure. We talked about it many times, you know. Yeah, but they didn't miss a beat. And I, not at all. Not at all. Mahomes is so good too. Like, it's just, yeah, and I. I even with not having to kill, I mean, there's just so many weapons. Yes. Yep. That it just makes uh, – that team is just – I keep thinking every year, too, like, and I love them, so it's not from, like, a hating perspective, but, like, that eventually, like, it's like, okay, like, Travis Kelsey is going to have a down year. Like, he just keeps balling out. Like, and then every year he fucking – he just still looks uh, – he's like a receiver out there, man. It's crazy. Yeah. It's, yeah. I mean, the thing that I think is going to come down to Kansas City is just the defense. Yep. Like Always if that does. defense if that defense can show up, that team is gonna be is gonna be really nice. So yeah, that I think was a really big thing. Of course the Bills just banking the Rams. Mm-hmm. I like didn't that. see that game, but that was why. Yeah, they they just completely dominated them uh, in all aspects of it. They just dominated them. Super Bowl and hangover. I, yeah, and I think what it was is that like they're not realizing how much having that secondary receiver affects their offense. Mm-hmm. Like having Odell, having Robert Woods, having that type of receiver. Yeah, did Robinson play? Allen Robinson. He played, but it just it wasn't effective. Mm-mm. So, yeah. and I don't know if he's just at that same. So what you're saying, the offense just wasn't moving and they were just kind of going to cup the whole time? I think they did. He got a ton of targets, I saw. Yeah, he did. And it's like, but if teams know that, then. Yeah, of course. You can't just throw it to one guy. No, that's. So. There was a couple big ones, man. Like San Francisco to the Bears. I was like, what the fuck? That was a weird game. I watched that I mean, I'm not going to judge too much on the game because the fucking weather conditions were ass. Like, did you see that field? Yeah. And mm-hmm. Trey Lance is a new quarterback, so I mean, I guess I should. Yeah, so I'm not going to judge too much on that first game. It was a, a, the tough conditions, cold, or not yeah. say cold, but like just wet and yeah. So, wouldn't judge too much on that. Um, 
was your favorite game that you watched? Was there one that was like oh, a dog ass game? That Pittsburgh yeah. and Bengals game was just fucking insane, bro. Just the dramatics, the missed field goal, the block, like it was just it was a lot. So that, that game was that game was really, really good. I even enjoyed the Lions game against the Eagles. Like that was that was a pretty uh, solid game as well. Yeah, Lions fought hard to get back into that. That's a that was a good one. I totally agree with you. That Steelers one was absolutely bonkers. Holy shit! There was a lot of missed field goals this week. It was a shit ton of field goals. Yeah. And who would have thought that like McPherson would have missed that field goal like right. that? Right. Right. Or that, the run he had in the playoffs. Yep. And then like the Colts, I forgot who they played. They played so much shitty, I think. And like like they, they were missing a bunch of field goals. It was, the they played team. the Texans. Yes. Yes. And I think the Texans were up at one point, like big, and then the Colts came back. It was wild. They bro. did. Hell, even that fucking Browns and Panthers game, the Browns was smacking yeah. Carolina and Baker was like, Hold on, hold on. Yep. Hold my beard. These they ain't about to disrespect me on my home. <laughs> Like they lost they, though, right? They did lose. They lost, but he, they put up seventeen in the fourth. Like they went damn, off. damn. Speaking of big points in the fourth, you see the Saints, baby, nineteen in the fourth. <laughs> oh man, we looked like shit for three quarters, and then Bruh. out of nowhere, it was like Michael <laughs> Thomas like, is back, baby. That guy's a beast. Yeah, yeah. It was, it was really good. And then, um, I think, just the teams that like the game. And then Saquon. Yeah, baby. He's on my fantasy squad. That was a Bro. good pick. I feel really good about that. And, I, and I'm I, I, like, and nobody else is happy about the fact that he is yeah. back to what we wanted him to be at. Exactly. And we know he could be at. Like, uh, him being at that, it's just good for the NFL. Bro. It is. You're so right, he is Bro. too much of a beast, bro. He's unbelievable, so, man. I, I, That's a good way of putting it because sometimes I'll see highlights of him, which mainly are – from Penn State, right? Because that's where, like, we haven't seen a lot of him in the NFL. But, like, he's special, man. Like, that dude is, like, different. And, like, the year – his first rookie year, when he was healthy, he played great. And then it's just been injuries since then. So, yeah, I really hope he can return to the same player because he's electric. Yeah. Yeah. And then you look on things on a, on a negative side, like the Packers. Yeah, they got smacked, dude. That's crazy. They – I watched that, and they – look like shit on both ends. Like, the yeah, defense just the wasn't there. Good. The energy was weird, bro. They were just It was like, completely off, bro. And like, I mean, and I think what really that – the first, like, that play to uh, – what was his name? Christian Watson, where he dropped that touchdown. Like, right. I think that really just kind of, like, fucked up the energy for them. But yeah, I mean, dude. They, got, they got some things to figure. I mean, they did this last year. They did this last year. Um, matter of fact, didn't they start the season off against the Saints last year and they got popped? Was Ooh. that who they played it? Yes, the exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so, and they went and still went twelve and three last year. So, right. Who knows? But I don't. I don't feel as confident because seventeen. They, yeah, their weapons just don't look as good, man. No. Nah. No. Nah. We'll, we'll see what happens. I mean, let's say they have a horrible year. Do you think Aaron Rodgers just retires, or do you think he? Like tries to go out, like leave again, go somewhere else, or uh, I don't think he's gonna try to leave again. I think he's he's good where he's at, and they're giving him what he wants. I don't think he's gonna leave. They just they're gonna have to make some changes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I I, I think the expectations was that they would struggle, you know, initially in offense. But I don't. I think the thing that worried me the most is defense. I don't yeah, think anyone expected that good. defense to be. I mean. Did, did do they not know who Justin Jefferson is? Exactly, he's a stud. The dude went bro. for like over a, what was it like a hundred and fifty something in the first half. He did, bro. That made our um, Vikings prediction look pretty good. They they, they look promising for sure. <clears throat> they, really good passing so, attack. Fuck. Yeah, so defense is elite. Yeah, that defense is scary, bro. They they're nice. Yeah. So I um yeah. They, they got some things to worry about. But for sure, I think the Chiefs just really, really shocked me how good they look. They did, man. I would say they probably looked the best. Did you see the Raiders Chargers? That was that was pretty interesting. I, I did watch some of that. That was – yeah, that was interesting. I just – I don't – I'm not liking the offense right now. Yeah, too, well, Carr was not playing well at all. 
Yeah, he wasn't playing well at all, and he was he was too focused on Devontae Adams. Yes, the whole time. And just like, bro, do you not know who you got on your team? Yeah. Like, you got Winfro. You have Waller. Exactly. Like, you got all you got all pro talent. You got Josh Jacobs in the back. Like, you got talent around you. You don't have to hone. Like, if I'm not mistaken, Adams had 16 targets. Yep. Something like that. I was watching it. It was constant. Like, yeah, you're right. It's almost like you could just see that the team could just scheme in. Like, all right, they're just playing Adams. It was almost like they were like, let Adam, let, let Devonte do Devonte, and we'll just like cover everyone else. And like, yeah, they fell right for it. You know. So. And just like, bro, you got to realize, like, Wall is an All Pro tight end. Yeah. Hunter Renfro was like, again, he's he was an All Pro last there. year. So it's like you spread the ball around, use him as a decoy. Yeah. Like, but you gotta. You got to figure out. You got to get a better scheme. They do. It's going to be an interesting division, bro. It and is. That division wild. is gone. And I can't believe the Broncos lost to the Seahawks. I couldn't either. That was pretty shocking. I like, Geno Smith actually looked really good. He did. I didn't watch it, so I can't say he looked good. But his numbers look great. His passing percentage, his completion percentage was off the chart. It's like, damn, bro. Interesting. Yeah. I watched it when I was at the, uh, at the gym. He, I mean, he just looked sharp. Um, so yeah, I mean, well, yeah, let's see, but yeah, it's hard because it's just week one, right? So there's so much you want to say, it's just, it's yeah. like anything can happen. Well, it's with the Broncos, like they had, if I'm not mistaken, three different trips into the, uh, in the red zone with two fumbles in the midfield goal. Yep. That can't That's happen. no, definitely not, bro. A lot of crazy mistakes like that. It was very interesting seeing Burrow throw all those picks. Like, I was like, yeah. damn, bro. Yeah. But I think, too, with some of it is just, remember, he, he was recovering from what? Didn't he have a surgery over the offseason? I don't know. I'm not sure. I think he had a surgery over the offseason. Um, so, he's still recovering from it. So, I, I, I'll, um, I'm i not going to, like, ride on it too hard, but I think he'll be able to correct it. Yeah. It's going to be a good one, man. I think. And then we got a good game this tomorrow. Right? Tomorrow. Chargers and Chiefs. It's a good game. That's going to be a dog ass game. Yeah, bro. It'll be Those a dog. Are... What's your prediction? Who you got? I hope. Well, I don't know. Not really a prediction. Yeah, Chargers but I just... is going to win that division. So. I did. I hope it's a shootout, regardless of who wins, because the that both those offenses just have incredible opportunity. Keenan Allen's hurt, though, right? So, yeah, Allen is hurt. Yeah, he is hurt. Um, after watching both of them, I'm gonna have to say that the Chiefs are gonna win. Like, but I guess that's just based off a of Week One prediction. That's not doesn't I'm mean that. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with the Chargers. Okay. That defense is not the the defense that Kansas City played against the Arizona. No, that D is crazy. That like, yeah, like those. That's a different breed of. Different that's gonna be a fun defense. side of the ball to watch. And when Kansas City's on offense for said defense, you're right. Their secondary is so good. So that'll be yeah. yeah. So that's one book with that game is I'm gonna be locked in on that one. Yeah. Ooh, this is gonna be a good one. It's uh I don't know, man. It's weird because again, like there's stuff I wanna say and like, but it's so hard not to base just a single week off of or excuse me, like make predictions, you know, off of one week yeah. of football. But Man, like the Chiefs look really good. Um, trying to think, like, who else fired on all cylinders? The Bucks like, look good, but I don't know if that's just the Cowboys being trash or if that was, like, the Bucks being – I feel great. like they looked okay. I don't know. And then plus that Godwin injury with yeah. the uh, hamstring. Who knows how, like, how long it'll be before he comes. And Dak. Yeah. And, like, so talking about these injuries, right, how are these guys getting injured and then they're actually like, oh, they're going to be out six to eight weeks, and it's like – or they're out for the whole season. The next thing you know, like Dak was like, oh, he'll be back in four weeks. Or right. TJ Watt potentially going for the season. Oh, he'll be back in six weeks. Like, what? Like, that is Drew true. Tore, tore his peck. Huh. Like, I didn't even hear that the TJ Watt got – now they're saying a couple weeks? They're saying in six to eight weeks he'll be back, bro. Damn. I guess he got a second opinion because they were initially saying that he might potentially need to have surgery. Uh-huh. But now he got a second and third opinion. They were like, oh, yeah, he'll be back in six to eight weeks. I hope so. <laughs> Did you see him in that game, bro? bro that dude did was, you see that interception he got? That right, he got the sack, and then the next play, he picked that off. It was like, bro, this guy's like single handedly like, going ham, going crazy. He's an animal, bro. Yeah. So I, um, 
Yeah, I was just really weird. Or Zach, like, with the finger thing, like, he's out six. Oh, no, he's going to be out four weeks. Yeah. Man, they look so. like trash, bro. Again, it's hard after one week, but God, I love it. I'm not a fan of them. So, <laughs> <laughs> man, they just look, I don't know, like washed yeah, up. Mean, again, that line is just not. Nope. Zeke is like a not... shell of himself. Like, Bruh. it's just crazy. Yeah. They got that might be a sorry ass them. division. We kind of want the Giants to fuck around and win it now. That'd be cool. Man. Who do we then... say for that? The Eagles? Yeah, we said the Eagles. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we said the Eagles, yeah. Um, and then one of the bigger things that we, I think we kind of, we haven't been, like Lamar looked good. Yeah, and still they they didn't, or, they didn't close it. He's not yeah. talking about it for the rest of the season. So, right. but I mean, he, he, Lamar looked really, really solid week one, bro. Yeah, he did. I think he threw three or I four mean, touchdowns. I granted they were playing, they were playing the Jets, but. <clears throat> I mean, still. Yep, Jets suck, but he did look good. He played smart. I'm excited to see him this year because, obviously, it's a contract season for him, so he's going to yeah. have to really ball really out. Really ball out, yeah. Because yeah. if he doesn't, you know, his last two years haven't been horrible, but just not nearly, obviously, what he did his MVP year. So now yeah. it's like he – I don't think he can sit because his value would lower a lot. He needs to show everyone that he's elite, you know, so this is going to be yeah. a year where, oh, it's a big proving year for him. I hope – But did can. you see that, like, reportedly they made an offer to him a 250 with, like, 170 guarantee, and supposedly he turned it down? Damn, I wonder what he's looking for. Well, it wasn't – the. I don't think it was the money. It was a guarantee money that he was – that right. the issue was because – Watson just got a whole entire – he got the whole entire thing guaranteed. And he's like, listen, he just got this whole guy. And he hasn't played for, like, almost two years. Like, I, I won MVP. And Could you do I, that, Mo? Do what? If you were in that situation, like, that's insane. Turn down that money? $170 because you want Guaranteed. Actually, you're getting 250 assuming you don't get, like, catastrophically injured, you know? But – like and you're like nah, I'm turning down 170 million dollars. That's that's tough, but I mean it's it's part of the thing. Thing like you got to part of being a, a a professional athlete is betting on yourself. It definitely is. Holy shit! Right, like that's part of it, and that's one of the things somebody was talking about it with like athletes and and the fact that like you have to be like irrationally confident. Yeah, that's true. That is true. And so like. And this whole Lamar situation is a prime exam- example of that. Like he's being irrationally confident, right? Like because if someone was a little bit more rational and, and coming at this from a um, more conservative type of point of view, you're like, listen, take the money because who knows what could happen? You may get injured, and then that what else, right? But having that irrational confidence in yourself is going to make you take a risk and hope that there's a reward on it. For sure. For sure. I just don't think I would ever turn down $170 million. That's so crazy. Damn, bro. God. I mean, I guess because at that point, they're already multimillionaires. So, I mean, he's probably good. You know, it's just. Yeah, he's good, but yeah. more is better. <laughs> more is better. $170 million, dollars, bro. More is better, bro. It's fucking wild. That's tough. The contract. um whatever they're called too, like rewards or signing bonuses some of them get are absolutely wild. Like, I mean, we just heard hearing what that. You, we heard what Hutch got. Mm-hmm. Exactly. As a rookie. Exactly. Him, Burrow. I heard Burrow on a po- podcast talk about it. Just like it just gets wired right to your account, like the day after you sign. Like, that's I mean, insane. Right? Matter of fact, uh, who was it? Cam Newton was on uninterrupted. And, uh, on the shop and he was talking about how like every you know so you know nfl players they get paid weekly for every week that they play yep he was like bro i'm just sitting here literally play a week seventy five thousand dollars or something like or no it may have been like seventy five thousand sorry mm. check every so week. crazy so crazy bro or it may have been more than that. It may have been like 750. I don't know. Dude, but like regardless, still, yeah. 
that's so much money. Like <laughs> that's like a, more than probably 99% of people's like salary for a year, you know, like that's so Shit wild. Insane. Shit is insane, bro. Yeah. That's what's so nuts. It is, but they have such a small window to make it, you know? Yeah, so, they do. It so much luck, limited. man. So much luck for yeah. these athletes. It's, it's crazy that it just rolls one way or the other, you know? And then you got mm-hmm. people like LeBron who never get in the, you know, I mean, until recently, that dude, his whole life, never missed games, never had a year mm-hmm. of injury. Like, and there's other See, dudes the who were great and just like injuries derailed their whole career, you know? Right. Like Brand and Roy. Yeah. Grant Hill. Well, at least Grant was still able to play for. Right. Well, 13 yeah. year Brand Roy played like six. Exactly. Derek Rose. I mean, again, he get, got to play, but like he's not the same dude. Mm-mm. Nowhere near. Yeah, yeah, bro. Speaking of the NBA, I've heard nothing. Inform me. You, you are a fucking liar. <laughs> I don't know what. <laughs> don't even play. You're right in the heart of this shit. Stop playing. Oh, Sarber? Is that what you're talking about? Yes. That's why, yes. bro. I saw the headline yesterday. I didn't read it, but yeah. I mean, I've been hearing for years now that that dude's been kind of a scumbag human being. So that's. So do, have you heard what the reports have been? No. Is, is it just okay. more like harassment and like horrible office so culture and stuff? they actually kind of have some reports around like some of the shit that they found in the investigation over the last year. Mm-hmm. So um, they have said like on five different occasions, he has said the N-word. Holy and shit. So now let me put some context to it. He's not saying the N-word as in calling someone the N-word. He is using the N-word in um regurgitating what someone else said. So he's like saying, oh, well, so yeah, so Mike was like, man, fuck that. Yeah. You know what I mean? So like he's regurgitating what someone else said. And so like, but in these instances, someone on the team is like, or on the staff is like, you can't say that even if you are repeating what someone else said. Mm-hmm. Right. But it's still on five different occasions, he has still said. Yes. Wow. That okay. Yeah. Then, he also, I guess during some, I don't know what it was, event or whatever like that, pulled down a staff member's pants, like Yankees pants down, like this was like a frat party or something. Um, then he made a comment to a female em- uh, employee. Um, I guess she may have gotten like a breast augmentation. It was like, oh, I see you got an upgrade. Oh. Nice. That's just okay, dude. See stuff like this, like uh, God, these guys. It's like, <laughs> Think about how prevalent it probably was, like before this shit was like you know brought to the forefront. And it was like this is wrong. Like, can you imagine? Like, that's what really disgusts me, bro. Think about the seventies or in, like the sixties. I mean, <laughs> oh my God. remember how we were talking about that fucking uh, show on HBO with the lake? Yeah. Let me. Hey, let me ask you a question. Back to what he saying the N-word out of context. Obviously wrong. Does that I don't say more acceptable, but does that not infuriate you the same way? Obviously, if obviously if he was calling someone the N-word, is that like different for you? I think it, it's still upsetting, but if it but if you're not like attacking someone with the word i think there, there is a there's levels to it. definitely like, a difference but if, if you were in the conversation and i or another white guy did that would you check them or like oh yeah for sure like, you're definitely. not cool with that yeah okay. no i had to check somebody the other day when i was at the gym he's over here singing kid over here singing dreams and nightmares yeah and i looked at him and i was like what'd you just say He's like, what? I was like did you just say nigga he was like oh well i was i was like i heard what you're singing but you got to kind of wrong, but you also have to have sympathy for us on that, that we can't like sing to some great music. Sometimes it's like, fuck man, I got to like restrain my, like, come, dude, it's great music. Like, you know what I mean? I'm, like, I understand it's great music. It's self-control sucks for that. I will say. You like, just gonna have to yeah. uh, listen. <laughs> you gotta, you gotta find a way. You found a, yeah, you found a way it. when you was younger to not know it's wrong. Your parent. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Like you found a way to bleep out those cuss words when you were around your parents. Yeah. You can find a way to not say that word during these songs. So. Yeah. No, you're right. What if they're? What if? What if I'm alone in my car? That's on you. Okay. No one's there, so that's on you. 
But is it wrong? I'm asking. Is it wrong? Yes, it's wrong. It's wrong. But, it's wrong, sir. But, but not I guess it is. That's on yeah. you. I guess that's wrong. Because it's still be wrong practice, to say horrible it's shit. A, it's a consistent practice, right? right. Mm -hmm. So, because if you do it by yourself, no, you're right. Like if you were talking you're horrible shit about and someone, around your friend, you gonna fuck around. And, no, that's you know obviously wrong. Yeah. So, no, but I, yeah, I guess if you say something horrible, even if no one's around, that's still wrong, right? Yeah. It's so. still wrong. So it's practice. So putting in practice <laughs> to it, you probably yeah. want to not. You want to. You probably don't want to practice that while you doing no. it by yourself in your right. car. Right. So you fuck around and slip up in front of someone. And right. Or ruin you your whole life. Your windows, your windows is rolled down while you <laughs> at a red light. And somebody oh. look at you like the fuck did he just say? Oh my god, so that'd be crazy. Be you may want to be careful. <laughs> just put that. Out. <laughs> bro, I jam music in my car, bro. I have to when I go to red lights, I have to turn it down. Sometimes, like stop, like I, I I'm All like because right. I sing my heart out, and I, I'm like embarrassed to like pull up to a red light and like the three people around, and I'm fucking. I, I get caught sometimes. Some dude pulled up to me. The other day, like while we were driving, and he's like, "Hold on your window." It's like, "What?" He's like, "I gotta know." Like, "What are you jamming to?" And I started laughing <laughs> so hard. It's like, "Damn, I must be fucking putting on a show in here." <laughs> it's nothing better than I. We're, we're, I forget where I was. I think I might have been driving to Lansing, and when I tell you this white dude was going to fuck in, and I'm talking about it was a drum solo, and it was his shit. And he <laughs> went the fuck. He was going in just do do do. Yeah. Like he was going, and I was like, I need to be in that car with him. You he felt it? Fucking, uh, like, I could feel the energy coming out that fucking car, bro. I love it, man. God damn, there's but, nothing like that, bro. I, I think I enjoy listening to music in the car, like, the most. Like, I look forward to it every day, like, yeah. in the car. I'm like, oh, yeah. I'm jamming today. Yeah. It, like, especially if it's, it's a, if it's a cut, like, mm -hmm. it, it'll definitely get you there. Right. But, so, did you hear about the whole finding everything that Sarver got? Oh yeah, Jesus! We really went off topic there. No, it was a year, and what was it five million or five hundred thousand? So he got a year and ten million. Ten million, wow! Yeah, so a little bit heftier fine, but a lot of the questions that are coming from people are, why are you allowing for him to keep his team when the situation happened with Darnold Sterling? Mm. Do you think it has something to do with what you just said? Like that Sterling was being like overtly racist. And in this case, he was just like quoting the word. Well, I, part of that, yes. And then also too, part of it was that like Donald Sterling got caught on tape. Yeah. Well, yeah. Like there was video and audio evidence of him yeah, saying this. Exactly. Right? This is more based off an investigation. So the optics um, of it, right? Like maybe if right. we had some of the recordings of Sarver, it'd be different. But like once those tapes came out, like yeah, I think what the NBA made him within like the day, they were like, he's done. Like they, they can't yeah. allow that. They banned him for life. So um I do think that that's the reason why I'm not saying that that's the right thing because right now that like Adam Silver doesn't look good right now. Um as being a commissioner uh of how it handled, but I think it's because of this is it's nuanced in the sense that like he wasn't he wasn't attacking anyone with saying a word. So again, there's levels to it, but also like you still create a hostile work environment, right? Like you're pantsing somebody at work. Yes, not okay. That shit ain't okay. Like no. you're commenting on a woman's breast. Nope, not okay. That's not okay, bro. Like you can't do that shit. So um so he's creating a hostile work environment for people that work there. Um, so, yeah, I'm, it'll be interesting to see what I'm really going to be interested to see once the players are able to start to make comments. That's going to be. Can they not right now? What I, what I can't wait to hear. Oh, you mean like, like during like media week and stuff like that when they start giving interviews? Yeah, like because like when because right now I'm pretty sure they can't really comment on it. Okay. Um, but I think once they start to have media, media day and they start to have those conversations, I'm going to be truly interested to see, like, you know, somebody like Chris Paul was the head of the Players Association. If I'm not mistaken, I think he still, no, it's uh, uh, puts him in such a tough spot. It does. He's not the head of the Players Association, though. It's um, he was for a long time. He was. It's uh, what's the guard that just came from Portland over to New Orleans? TJ McCollum. Yeah, McCollum is the head of the uh, Players is Association it? right now. Yeah. Um, so, like, like 
like you said, that puts Chris Paul in a really weird space, though, because he, he used to lead that, right? So, and he's very opinionated. So, I, I'd be quite interested to see what the players have to say about the whole, the whole that's situation. A good point. Yeah, those are going to be some good sound bites, that's for sure. Again, I feel bad, though. That puts him in a shitty situation. Like, I don't know. That sucks. Poor and guy. then, um, do we want to talk about the Hall of Fame? Has there's been what? Do they announce the inductees? Oh, is it Manu's one, right? Manu and then Tim Hardaway. Tim Hardaway, shout out. Yeah. Yeah, okay. That's cool. A couple coaches, right? George Carl. Yeah, George Carl. Um, like a woman's coach. I forget who the other coach. Lindsey Whalen from the WNBA. Um, and there is somebody else I know. I can't think of them. I can't pick up who it is right now. Hmm. But well, good. Um, that Manu's getting in there, man. Definitely one of the best like I mean, foreign guards to ever it. play. Yeah, he, was, he definitely deserves it, bro. I didn't know his story, but I watched an interview from Pop or Duncan. Maybe they're both sitting there, but they were talking about him because he just got inducted. And like, I wasn't aware of this. They were saying he was already like the best Euro player before he came over here. Okay, did he come over like later, like in his mid twenties or something? Like he came over late. Yeah, Manu yeah. came over like relatively like well established in his career to where like he didn't need to come to the NBA. He just wanted to come to the NBA. Yeah. Um, and I mean, still put in work. I mean, you really you got to think about it, bro. He dude, he, he was nasty. Off. No one talks about him because he was the Spurs and he was like the third guy. But like he was nasty. He came off the bench, but like yeah. like he created a whole fucking move that is religiously used. Yeah, the step today. back, bro. Yeah. No, not that step. Oh, back. The Euro. That Euro stuff yeah. that literally was yeah. that's his that's his bro like he he was so, so good man like he was and, and had and had these surprising bunnies yeah like Manu would Sneaky raise up bunnies. on you and okay like that like he Manu had hops bro like he did he was the truth man and he didn't he always come off the bench like when they were in their first run he was the starting shooting guard I think later they brought him off the bench but like back in like yeah, 06, like 07, he was but like yeah. Yeah, he was amazing, bro. Yeah. Loved watching that. He'd hit big shots, too. He was clutch. Like, he – Oh, yeah. Give a fuck about the moment. That's a team, man, that's just like – I mean, I was too young for them when David Robinson was there. But the era with Tony Parker, Manu, and Tim Duncan, they were quietly like a dynasty, but just – I don't know if it was the market and the fact that those three or two were foreign and one was quiet, like, so they just didn't make a lot of noise, you know. But, like, no one thinks of the Spurs – of the 2000s, but, you know, they were a they fucking were for, dynasty. That was for sure. A, I mean, well, you think about it because in the 2000s, you had the Lakers in there as well, right? Yeah. That had that 3 P. But, like, you look at the longevity of what the Spurs did in that time, what they went to 20 straight playoffs or 21 straight playoffs, something mm-hmm. like that. Like, mm-hmm. that shit yeah. is unheard of. Absolutely nuts. And, like, how many did they win together? Five? Because Robinson got one or two. I don't know if he was part of, like. Um, no, four. so David Robinson had one, but they got five. Uh, they had five total. and But Mono only, I think Mono has. Probably two or three. Three of those, I think. And Tony Parker probably three. has three or. Yeah. Tim Duncan has five. Um, he has yeah, all five. five. Tim Duncan has five, yeah. yeah. Tim Duncan has five. So. Yeah, because he did. He won one with like Steve Kerr and uh, and um, um, Steve Smith and like with those guys. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he won. So was Dennis um, Rodman but, on that team too? No, he wasn't. On that he, he was on one of them. Robert Ory was on that team. That dude's Robert like fucking was on that team. twenty rings, bro. <laughs> the goat, Robert Ory. <laughs> I, yeah, he was the kind of before my time, but obviously, like the one shot I've always seen is that one that like was tipped out to him, and he just nailed it. Yeah, that I, guess was, the, I guess the king. Uh huh. Yeah, that was insane. Uh-huh. So, um, I know we could probably wrap up here soon, but I I watched that Netflix doc on Tim Donahue or okay. Donahue, yeah. the old ref that got. I remember that was betting. It was betting, yeah. On I've the never game. Seen it, but. Bro, so it's on Netflix. I definitely recommend that you watch it. 
he was on a verge for really exposing the NBA, it sounds like. So you like, think, like what more of it was going on? So so what he was close to exposing was like the NBA is an entertainment business, right? Mm-hmm. And what makes what makes the NBA? Your stars, right? People I know exactly come to see you. what made you think like of this because you're talking about people, the Kings versus Lakers. Yeah. <laughs> people come to see the stars. I'm sure that's what was. I'm sure that was referenced in the documentary at some point. That 2002 oh, yeah. Kings versus Lakers. Oh yeah. yeah, right. That was bad, bro. Yeah, yeah. They they literally he he literally stated this in there. That was the worst ever officiated game in all of NBA history. It was terrible. That game, that game six. With the Lakers and the Kings was the worst officiated game ever in the history of me. I mean, I haven't been around that long, but I would agree. I've watched the, uh, the like videos on just the amount of fouls called in the second half, like against the Kings and not the Lakers and shit like that. Like it, some sketchy it shit. Was just terrible. And they were talking about how he was mentioning around like refs would they literally have conversations around the fact that like they would ignore. If like Jordan was to foul somebody, or Shaq was to foul somebody, mm-hmm. or Kobe was to foul somebody, they like they would they would kind of swallow that whistle. LeBron fouled something. like they're swallowing that whistle in certain instances yep. because they don't want they want those players to be staying out on the floor and playing. Exactly. Yeah. So Ooh, it, was, it, was, it was it was it was yeah it they. I think he would. They were really, really on the verge of like exposing some things, but then David Stern kind of like put a put a debt in that because we. I'm with the NBA. The thing is that like the the NBA is its own entity, but there's so many things that the NBA affects um, from an economy standpoint and from a political standpoint right. that like it it's big business. Right, and, it is. They need and the stars out there, man. And it's like, who knew that so many things were so intertwined with the business of the NBA that it could affect things from from like a federal investigation standpoint with the FBI. Yeah, that's insane. I mean, I guess because they were doing so, if, if what he's saying is true, they were doing some really illegal shit. So I mean, you know. I mean, it just fucks with the integrity of the game. It does. Uh, so. Real quick, did you see? Oh, you sent it to me, so I know you saw. So Joshua accepted terms to a Fury I, fight. So yeah, so it'll be interesting on Fury's end to see what happens now because um, the question is well, like, is this a ploy? Like, is he just doing this to like he just wants Usyk to be like, all right, I'll fight, or like, is he actually does he want to fight Joshua? Well, from what I read, is that. Usyk is like I'm because he has an injury in his shoulder, correct? If I'm not mistaken, something he's injured somewhere. Yeah, yeah. So he's like, I'm I'm done for the rest of the year. I'm like I'm not fighting for the rest of the year. So Fury is like, well, shit. If I'm not gonna fight him, let me fight the guy that let me fight Joshua. At least I know because I mean, you and I spoke about this. Had Joshua won that fight against Usyk, that would have been marquee. Oh yeah, fucking, especially in England, which would have been man. Like yeah. I, we talked about it. Like they could go. They could literally sell out Wembley for that fucking fight if they want. Yeah. Oh yeah. Easy. Whew. So yeah. So we'll see, man. I mean, that'd be a cool fight. I'd love to see it. Yeah, and then Triple G and Canelo. Is that this weekend? Yeah. Who you got? Probably Canelo. Triple G is just pretty old now. You know, his yeah. last couple fights, it really showed he was taking shots. I mean, he doesn't look like it hurt him because he's fucking. He's a badass human, but like. He just looked slower, and he was taking shots. And it was like yeah. he's not the same. You know, he's almost four. He might be forty. He's right there. You know, Canelo's still pretty much in his prime. That whole thing just bothers me, man. I feel like Triple G didn't get his fair due of, as far as speaking of integrity of the game. I think I mean, God, like the the judging sometimes in boxing is just criminal, bro. Like, it's yeah, not fair for sure. And it's, sure. I think it's broken down to the same thing that you said. Like, they need the stars to be the stars, and like Canelo is a fucking world star and triple g is like uh speaks whatever he speaks ukrainian and doesn't you know he's not a household name so it's like yeah, he's right. not as marketable yep 
So I think he definitely won the first fight. I didn't even watch the second fight because I was so upset. And from what I understand, people say, like, he won or if not drew that fight and they gave it to Canelo. So it was like, God damn, bro. And then yeah. real quick, speaking about fights. Did you see what happened to Adrian Peterson? <laughs> oh my God, dude, he got yeah. That's sad. Why are they, they doing this, Mo? With that overhand right <laughs> so on. Mo, why are they doing this, bro? Like, I just, like <laughs> we talked about this on the cat. We talked about this. You're right, Adrian Peterson. He is money. broke. He is broke. He got to get whatever money he can. Oh my God, bro. It, like, so he got it. If, if people go pay to watch him fight, then fuck it. He broke, bro. He got to get this money. And yeah. Then fucking Nick Young getting clapped through the fucking ropes and shit. Nick Young fought? He fought. It got knocked. It got knocked. I'm going to go watch ropes, that as bro. soon as this is over. I'm going to go watch <laughs> that. No way. Swaggy P? Swaggy P, bro. <laughs> <laughs> It's a fucking uh, dog. What's going what on, doing? bro? I like, have no idea. What all I'm these doing. dudes, these YouTubers that are, I keep seeing like the big fight with, I don't even know these YouTube vloggers, but like they're yeah, all I fighting. Know. I'm like, what the fuck is going on, bro? But people, clearly people want it. So I, I get it. You know, regardless of the sport of boxing, like I understand, like that's a spectacle. Two people that are celebrities, like are about the fist fight. Like, so like that's, yeah. I get it I mean, to that extent. And I, it's in a sense, I, it, it's sensical. It's like it's not sensical, but also at the same time, it brings attention to the sport. Yeah, it does. You're right. I definitely so think Jake it, Paul's. Even done though that. it's a little, it's goofy, but like people are going to. I think people are getting a little bit mm -hmm. more interested in the sport. So, mm -hmm. speaking of that, I might go to that Jake Paul. It's in Phoenix. Jake Paul versus Anderson Oh, is Silva. it? It's nice. like a month from now. So I'm thinking if the tickets aren't bad, like that'd be an interesting spectacle to go to. You gotta check. So, you gotta go. You gotta go. Yeah, you gotta, we'll gotta see. Go. I might. I think I have the same prediction though as um, the last thing. I, I don't think this is gonna happen. I think Jake Paul, something weird will go down beforehand. But I mean, if they do, I don't see why he wouldn't win. Like, yeah, and so Anderson was, was pretty old, bro. He is old, bro. And yeah, you're really, right. Jake's pretty really calculated. Like his, yeah, and he's not really known for like his hand striking ability. I mm -hmm. feel like he's more known for like his kick. Definitely, yeah. I mean, he was a pro boxer, but you're right. He didn't fight like at the high level. He only had like ten pro fights, and it wasn't against yeah. you know big competition. So, but he has a boxing background, so I guess I give Jake that. We'll see. But he's fucking like forty eight or forty seven. So, <laughs> you know what this is, bro. So. Yeah.